buying your dream car, especially the luxury one, maybe the thing you have been waiting for. And buying luxury car comes with expectations for special customer experience. Ladies and gentlemen, please let me reach with my colleagues today, Ramona, Vicky, and also Ferd, to walk you through, through our solutions for Porsche in order to delivering the best customer experience. Today, you have asked us the question of how can Porsche develop the customer-centric services to attain better customer satisfaction in the next three years? And in order to answer that, we have identified three problem questions, which are how to assist customers in pre-purchase, in tracking and maintaining their orders, and also how to develop customers after sales experience. As an executive summary, we have identified three key, key issues representing where you are right now, which are unreliable purchase recommendation, no transparent order tracking tool and unstandardized communication, and also unsatisfying after sales experience. And we are offering three, triple T's uh, recommendations, tailor, track, and tackle as the strategies in order, to, in order to assist you in offering reliable advisory, premium customer service, and also responsible after sales service. Now let's take a look at the situation analysis and let's get to know your company better. So your company, Porsche, is based in Germany, but uh, you also serve the, serve the Chinese market and currently rank 10 in the China DAS 2021, which is the dealer satisfaction index. And because of that, you want to develop more customer service and in order to increase the customer satisfactions. And you have different series of cars and the latest innovations are the hybrid and also all electric luxury cars. Now, since we are trying to develop the customer experience, let's talk about your customers. So selling luxury cars means that you're targeting high income people. And one of the representative of this group is Paul, a taken buyer. So he does the research online. And as a, as a luxury car buyers, uh, he prefers the personalized service and also do it for me services. And he is planning to go for the one for one replacement scheme by the Hong Kong Star government in order to attain his new all electric car. And the, there are four steps involved in the customer in the current customer journey, which are explore, purchase, tracking, and also after sales. That will be further elaborated in next in the next slides. So now let's talk about the pre-purchase customer experience or the explore step. So in Paul's experience, he did the research online, and he didn't. However, he didn't know what what are the main components or the important components to include in his car, especially considering he is living in Hong Kong. So therefore we have identified the problems or pain points, which are the fragmented information, non-personalized and non-localized recommendation, and also the subjective recommendation that relies on the dealer. So different dealer may have different recommendations that is not uh, standardized. So the first key issue that we have identified is the unreliable purchase recommendation. Moving on to the order tracking experience or the tracking and purchase step. So in Paul's experience, he had to ask dealer a few times, especially in order to ensure the uh, delivery timeline and also the status update. And he thought his specification order was placed successfully, including his amendments. And we have identified the problems or the key uh, pain points, which are the vulnerable, which are which is that the current system it is vulnerable to the dealer's mistake. So dealers may have uh, forgotten to amend the specifications or place the order properly and there is no tool for customers in order to track the orders and considering this situation we we acknowledge that there is a necessity for customers to know and to track the delivery timeline or the specifications and also specification amendments therefore the second key issue we identified is the not transparent order tracking and unstandard and standardized communication now let's talk about the after sales experience so in Paul's experience, his car was delivered, but it was not as specified. And it turned out that his amendments were not placed properly, and he was not specified with the uncertain compensation. Therefore, the pain points or, pre or problems identified are the no specific policy handling. Uh, sorry, there is no specific policy in handling dealer's failure, and also no channel to obtain further information and help. Therefore, the third key issue identified is the unsatisfying after sales experience. To sum up, in order to answer the case question, we have identified three key issues, unreliable purchase recommendation, no transparent order tracking tools and unstandardized communication, and also unsatisfying after sales experience. And our strategies will try to overcome this and will be further elaborated my, by my colleague Ramona. Well, thank you, Richard. Directly down questions. Let's take the overview of the solution we are going to propose. In order to tackle the pain points we encounter in each step, we are trying to recommend online questionnaire with personalized recommendation, smart Porsche app, as well as the service quality measurements. So moving on to the next slide, here comes our first question. How to assist customer in pre-purchasing? 
uh, we will rec uh, we will introduce you our first strategy, Taylor, by offering the reliable advisory service with the online questionnaire with personalized recommendations. And this specifically uh, would help to tackle the pain points that in uh, that appear in the first app, Explore. So moving on to the next slide, let's take a look at some current insights. So we identified that there are actually some underlying problems. First, customers search for the needed options by themselves. Second, dealers simply focus on assisting with the purchase and paperwork process, which means customers with limited knowledge are actually the ones who proactively reaching out. Therefore, we want to assist Porsche to a better future positions, where it should have the systematic and experienced assistance for the customer, as well as offer personalized options recommendation. And these would be further explained in our first strategy, Taylor, by setting up the customer preference database, as well as having the online questionnaire with recommended car options and features. And moving on to your next slide, let's take a look at the details. So after filling in the questionnaire, the system will automatically generate the ideal model and components for the personalized recommendations. And after this, the detailed introduction of the suggested options or the car components will be delivered to the customer. And in order to do this, we need to make good use of technology, big data, and machine learning by leveraging Porsche's existing customer base as well as the past collected customer information. Then you may wonder, what are some areas covered in the questionnaire? So customer would infer their uh, preference on a car configurator, their preferred lifestyle, their current living region, as well as the specific scenario of preference when they're driving the cars. At the same time, they could enter any special requirement and the price range. And after, the com after completing the questionnaire, they would directly be led to the option um, to having a question with more information about a car. And we believe by doing this, the customers could enjoy, moving on to the next slide, customer could enjoy the personalized recommendation in a premium way. Also with more comprehensive information with the suggested options. At the same time, it could help them to save time. And for Porsche, it is a great opportunity to establish a customer database provide satisfactory customer experience as well as get more insights from customers. So moving on to your next slide, let's take a look at our second question. How to assist customer in tracking and maintaining their orders? And we will introduce you our second strategy, Track, by offering the premium customer service with all-in-one Smart Porsche app. So moving on to your next slide, let's take a look at some current insights. We identified that there are several underlying problems. First, Sometimes there would be missing orders, especially with the messy chat channels, because currently customers are communicating with the dealers on WhatsApp, face-to-face, -face, or even by mails. Second, the out-of-stock inventory issue will result in delay in production and even delay in the arrival time. Third, Porsche is not really displaying the car production details in, ter in terms of which stage the car production is in to the customers. Therefore, we want to assist Porsche to, uh, Porsche to a better future positions. Um, with clear order placing with standardized chat channel, real-time inventory checking, as well as a transparent tracking system. And these will be further explained in our second strategy by launching a smart Porsche app, an all-in-one app with integrated communication, inventory checking, as well as a tracking process. And now let's see how our smart Porsche app would help to tackle the pain point we encounter in step two, purchase. So moving on to the next slide. The reason why we are the goals for setting up and launching the Smart Porsche app is uh, to systematic, systematically record the customer's requests and any new changes, to store the information, and to generate a tool list for both customer as well as the dealers. At the same time, enable the customer to check the production stage. So under this app, there will actually be two separate interfaces for both dealers as well as the customer. So now let's take a look at the detail of the dealer side. We want other features to tackle in problems. So first, there will sometimes be mix up and missing orders because dealers are dealing with so many customers at the same time. Therefore, the first feature would be setting up separate portal for different customers. The case study we conducted is on AIA insurance agency system, where they have some system and it has led them to great success. Second, the dealers sometimes forget to update new customer requests or orders. Therefore, the second feature would be the e-checklist and to-do list, as well as a reminder for the dealers. Third, there will sometimes be failure to inform the customer the right delivery time and the right lead time. Therefore, we, uh, the third feature would be setting up the inventory tracking system for um, the dealer, for them to have a more comprehensive information and accurate information to inform the customer. Then moving on to the customer side, um, there are two main problems here. 
default, um, so first, um, the customer, they have unclear information about inventory as well as the lead time. Therefore, we also want to have an inventory checking system on the customer side, where the customer could have a clear idea of the current status of the inventory, the lead time, and the predicted restore time, and even the car availability on the, show, on the car showroom. And the case that study we conducted is on Yahoo Hong Kong. So the second main problem is that there will sometimes be missing orders, um, especially when, do, uh, when the dealers are dealing with so many things. So what we want to eliminate our customer's anxiety. Therefore, there would be a systematic chat box um, appeared on a customer page with their assigned dealer for them to have a more systematic channel um, for them to communicate their needs and wants. And now I'll pass time to my colleague, Vicky, to talk about the next Thank you, Ramona. And our third stop, tracking. We have proposed that the production tracking system and a smart portrait app to tackle the pain point. So how does it actually work? Referencing from the Taobao model, the tracking system can be classified as the productions and shipping status. For the production status, the predicted customer inquiries might be the component on the production timeline of the car. Therefore, the arrival status of components on the production status of the semi-finished it and finished it car will be displayed. While for the shipping status, predicted customer inquiries might be the shipping location and predicted arrival time. Therefore, the location, such as the factories, physical stores, will be displayed. Coming to the next slide, so what are the benefits of investing such an app? For the customer, they could enjoy a better customer experiences through more comprehensive and transparent services. And at the same time, they could be more familiarized with the order details and the progress. While for Porsche, your company could lower the rate of making communication mistakes and lead to the delayed arrival of cars and provide a more personalized services with a closer customer and dealer relationship. Thus, the smart Porsche app could highly eliminate the unnecessary monetary voucher compensation costs, which worth the return on investment. And coming to our third questions on how to develop the customer after sales experiences, our strategy three tackle can provide a compensation that fits the customer need and negotiate before the purchase to improve the after-sale services. To the last stop, after-sale services, we have proposed that the surface quality measures to tackle the pain point. We have identified a problem of unstandardized and back and forth after-sale services, but what are the cause of the problem? The current practices of Porsche is making the negotiations when the accidents occurred and provide vouchers as compensation. Yet, what are the actual needs and wants of the customers? During the delay of shipment, the customer will lose their car for daily uses when they have disposed of their old one due to the government 141 replacement scheme. So the current culture voucher compensation fails to solve the need of the customers. Therefore, the company should introduce compensations to cater the needs on not having a car for their daily uses. Coming to the next slide, so what will be your future position? The counter measures for different accidents that cater the emergency needs of the customer should be implemented. Even under the launching of the Smart Porsche app, which could greatly eliminate the misconnections or the miscommunication and the risks of making mistakes, there might still be some uncontrollable incidents, such as a shortage of component, the delay shipment due to pandemic, there might still be the delay of car arrival. Therefore, in order to further eliminate the unnecessary monetary and the voucher compensation costs to nearly zero, we have proposed that this associate strategy tackle by standardizing the company policy on handling the accidents. So how does it actually work? Before com the customer making their purchase decisions, the dealer will clearly state the company measures and to make the negotiations on the compensation details. For the company, you could categorize your possible issues and decide as related compensation terms and try to show that your company is responsible for all the unpredicted accidents. The company compensation policy should also be clearly stated to the customer in advance. Yet, there might still be some accidents of the late arrival, as we have mentioned earlier. If the customer has already disposed of their old car and a new car is not yet ready for the pickup at the predicted arrival date, the company should implement the countermeasures. The company will then offer the company car for customers to drive and to deal with their daily need. And, the sign, um, and then they will also sign the temporary lending contract and the confirmation to make a mutual agreement on the company car quality and the temporary ownership before passing it to the customers. Coming to the next slides, referencing from the Korea BM the purchasing measures, the following will be the customer journey on facing the delay of order. When the delay of car occurred, 
the company will take the initiative to offer the company car and to sign the document with the customers. Once the other car arrived, the customer could then return the company car and get the new car at the same time. And this could highly eliminate the unsatisfactory during the waiting time of their order. So what are some benefits highlighted in this strategies? Coming to the next slide for the customer, their customer shopping experiences are being improved through being notified the countermeasures in advance. While for Porsche, your company, you could raise your brand awareness and to increase your customer satisfaction rate and further lower the cost of making monetary compensations. To sum up, after going through the four customer steps, explore, purchase, tracking, and after sale services, we have proposed that the questionnaire, the smart Porsche app, and the associate strategy, the service quality measures. By doing so, the customer journey from awareness to consideration, purchase, and advocate could be improved. And now I'll pass the time to Fern to talk about the implementations. Thank you so much, Vicky. Um, in terms of the implementation, we project this plan to be a three-year project. Um, you can spend around three months performing big data analysis, training machine learning, developing a smart Porsche app, and developing inventory checking and tracking system. And after that, you can have a beta testing period to ensure that the system is functioning well. And then the staff training scheme can be performed to familiarize the staff with the new system. And after everything is all set, you can expect to start launching the full system by the second quarter of the second year. And we would also suggest you to regularly maintain the system every year. And for the revenue, I'm um, sorry, for the cost, um, total incrementation cost for um, this project is going to be around 29.63 million Hong Kong dollars, which include the total salary of the software developer and the UX UI designer of 13.65 million Hong Kong dollars, the product development cost of $8.25 million, car offering scheme of $6.53 million, and the training cost of $1.2 million. So moving on to the revenue part, for the revenue, there are some key assumptions to be considered. First, we will estimate the total units sold in China by considering the 95,000 unit as a base amount, and you can expect to see a 12% growth rate for the total units sold. And we also assume the average Porsche price to be around 850,000 Hong Kong dollars. And we also assume that the, the unit sold of the Taycan model in China account for 14% of the total sale amount with the average price of 1.6 million Hong Kong dollars. And we would also assume that 15% of the customer who purchased the car gets an add-on items or the accessory with the average spending per customer of 150,000 Hong Kong dollars. And we also assume that the profit margin um, will be constant over this three year and also 25% corporate tax rate. Um, by looking at the revenue stream, you can expect to reach 114 billion Hong Kong dollars of revenue with the total profit of 14.2 billion in China by year three. Um, other than this, there are some KPIs that we can consider. Throughout this three year project, you can expect to deliver around 348,000 units of Porsche or model and 48,000 units of the Taycan models. And in terms of the ranking, you can expect to secure your first place in APEL index and secure top three position in SSI index, which both measure customer experience and the ability of the dealer to manage the process. On the DAS index perspective, which measure the dealer satisfaction with the automakers, you can expect to be in the top five position of this ranking. And in terms of finance, you um, can expect to see the total revenue over this three year to be 304 billion Hong Kong dollars. And by considering the operating profit margin of 16.5% and a total incremental cost of 29.62 million Hong Kong dollars, you can expect to see the total profit of 37.66 billion Hong Kong dollars. And by considering the wage average cost of capital of 9.78%, you can expect to have the net present value of this project to be around 31.09 billion Hong Kong dollars. Moving on to the last task about the risk and the mitigation. The first risk that we need to consider is the malfunction of the product recommendation system, which might result from the malfunction of the machine learning. However, we can mitigate this by frequently check and retrain the machine learning to make sure that the the system is functioning well. And the second thing is about the human error in data entry process, which um, in the inventory updating process and the delivery status process. 
Um, we can mitigate this by implementing a double checking procedure and also further adopt blockchain technology to improve the transparency. And the last thing is the risk of the property damage from the car offering scheme. However, we can mitigate this by asking the customer to sign the contract and the agreement upon the offer. And next, I'll pass my time back to Richard to wrap up this presentation. Thank you, Fern. So that's how, ladies and gentlemen, our Triple T strategy, Tailor, Track and Tackle will help you in order to offer reliable advisory, premium, premium customer service, and also responsible after sales service. Thank you for listening. We are now welcome for your questions. Thank you for your presentation. It's now time for the Q&A session. Judges, please make the questions short and concise and leave your thoughts and comments for the feedback session. The 15 minute countdown starts now. Let's hear the first question. I'm just finalizing my notes. Alpa, do you wanna go first if you're ready? Alpa, you there? Sorry, yes, I'm actually just um, reading through my notes as well. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> likewise. <laughs> yep, likewise. Would you like to ask a quick question first? Sure, why don't I go first? Um, uh, um, thanks a lot for the presentation team. Um, that was very interesting and insightful. Um, my my first question, and in no particular order, you know, is you know, as you um, sort of looked at the financial analysis, and in terms of you know the cost and the volume and how you get to certain profitability, you know, what are some of the drivers that you're looking at, and what kind of correlation do you derive between implementing some of these strategies and the correlation between that and the volume growth, which is, of course, how you're projecting um, your revenue going from 88 billion to 114. How are you thinking about that? Okay, um, thank you so much for your question. Um, I'll take this question. Um, so um, in terms of the um, correlation of the strategy that we implement um, and the revenue stream that um, we projected, we um, project that um, we, we, we expect that um, the satisfaction in the customer um, part, in, in the customer satisfaction, whereas, and also the um, integrating, integrated process of um, the updating and the tracking system and the inventory um, updating system will reduce the risk and reduce the rate of cancellation. Because in the case they mentioned that um, the customer, if if the process is delayed, like if the delivery process is delayed, the customer is allowed to cancel and get back their deposit without no without any interest. Um, so we expect um, we we project that um, our solution will solve this problem by reducing the cancellation rate and um, increase the um, the deliver amount that we deliver to the customer. So we expect that our sale revenue will increase from this part. Um, if I met some more information to my what my colleague has mentioned, so uh, previously in 2021, so like the Porsche's financial statement, the incremental growth of the revenue was like around 10%. And therefore, by implement that, implementing this project, we are assuming that the growth per year for the revenue year on year would be around 12%. Thank you. 
Um, and also, um, uh, just a quick add on on this, um, according to our uh, machine learning recommendation that we recommend to the customer, we expect to give them a more precise and um, more um, personalized recommendation to them, which can um, induce them and which can encourage them to purchase more on add on product. So we can expect to see um, more revenue from that part as well. Got it. Thank you for that, Des. Yeah. Over to you, Alba. Go ahead, please. Thank you. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess just as a, as a follow-up in a way to your question, um, and maybe I missed this, but just in terms of that correlation between that improved um, service and sales growth, how what were the figures on the loss due to cancellation? And I guess the other thing is, to a certain extent, this feels like a relatively reactive solution, um, you know, and it's very tech-based, which I understand is, is the world that we live in now. But with a premium brand like Porsche, is a client going to be comfortable having to do all that legwork themselves using an app? Um, so I will answer this question. So actually, the app, is, it is just a platform to standardize all the service. So it is not requiring of a customer to do all the process, like to choosing the car options or to going through all the paperwork on their own. But it is just a platform to insist them, like to have them to, uh, to equip them with a more comfortable way to look at the document. At the same time, to have them to equip them with a better picture and clearer idea of for example, which stage your cars are in, because I believe that uh, the potential car owners are quite curious and quite exciting about the incoming cars. And at the same time, this app would greatly help um, to boost the communication between the dealer and the customer. So the misunderstanding and miscommunication would be greatly reduced, which we also believe it is a great way to help our, to, to save and to save the effort and time of our potential customer. So um, it is the app just a standardization standardization process as well as an effort and time consuming process for other customer instead of asking them to do every sing single thing on their own. So in addition to what my uh, colleague has mentioned, so what we are trying to do uh, in this solution is trying to solve the problem that uh, our yeah, your client like the Paul has experienced. So in his experience, uh, he make amendments with the dealers and also he needed to like ask the dealers almost every month in order to make sure whether the timeline is still on the track or not. So in th we are trying to solve this problem because it turned out that at the end, the dealer doesn't make the amendments properly and with it was not recorded in the system of the company. Therefore, our app in this, in this case, we are just trying to give uh, the customer a tool in order to make sure that even if they have signed the contract of amendments and other requests, uh, the order or the amendments has been already placed properly in the cost, uh, company system, so it there will be less mistakes that could uh, that could possibly happen in terms of uh, delivering the customers' uh, orders. Thank you. Yeah, I guess that's a that's a fair point. But again, just pushing on the point that Alpo made earlier, you know, when you're buying a product at this kind of value. It seems that in your solution, what's missing is sort of the human interaction, right? Because it's more tech oriented. It's not like I'm buying, I don't know, a laptop, right? Where I can do all this online. Do you think there's any benefit where, you know, between the dealer as well as the company, the OEM, there should be a little bit more interaction direct with the customer, right? Rather than just relying on technology. Um, maybe I could take up this question. As yeah. we have mentioned before, um, the main functions or the main reason behind of establishing the dealer side and the, communica the customer side communication channel online is that we understand that most of our target customer of Porsche as a business busy man, where they would not spend a lot of time might be uh, facing or having face-to-face -face communications with their dealers. So what we are going to propose is to trying to move everything online, which will be more efficient and more effective for the communications. Yet, if the customer would still prefer having more face-to-face -face channel with the uh, communication with their own dealers, then they could still 
um, try to meet them face-to-face uh, -face on the physical stores. So what we are proposing here is not trying to eliminate all the chances of the face-to-face -face meeting between the customer and the dealers, but we are trying to move that online for uh, to cater the needs of the busy schedules businessmen. That is our main target of Porsche. Yeah, in addition to what my colleagues has mentioned, so um, we are not actually trying to eliminate the face-to-face -face, um, communication, as my colleague has mentioned, that uh, it will be quite a flexible. So because we are trying to buy a, a luxury car, right? You want to test drive it. You want to make sure everything is good and it feels comfortable for you. So uh, you can still utilize the system even if you are meeting the dealers face-to-face. -face. So for example, let's say you come to the dealer and then test drive, and then um, you want to buy a certain product of the of the car. So where this app is coming in is like when they want to buy or conduct a purchase, it will generate like the preferred or the uh, recommendations, especially for the uh, additional components that might be needed according to the customer uh, customer's uh, prefer preferences and also localization. So it will help the customer in this site. And then when the order is placed, the customer can just talk to the dealer. And when he wants to make sure uh, whether the order is placed uh, properly, he can open the open the app. So in this in this case, uh, the customer could still have a personal uh, dealer that he could talk to. But uh, in terms of making sure everything was done properly, he can open our app and also to maintain or monitor the status update of his orders. That's what we are trying to uh, deliver. Thank you. And just, I mean, you know, it's a very app heavy solution. Have you thought about, you know, you're working between the dealer and the client, but what about the manufacturing side of it? You know, that, that seems to be, there hasn't seemed to be much consideration around that entire value chain that has led us to a situation where you have a client potentially cancelling their order. So I'd be keen to understand, you know, what your thought process around that interface might look like. Um, maybe I could take up this question. Actually, for the dealer side features, as we have mentioned before, there will still be an infantry tracking system. So therefore, the company and the dealer will and the manufacturer will also have a close connections on updating the inventory of different components, the ready time or the exact um, inventory that is left in the manufacturing size and to further ensure that, that the customer order can be fulfilled within the arrival time. And if there is any accidents due to the pandemic, like might be there will be a shortage or the affected shipment process, then it will be notified through the app and the online system to the dealer and also to the company side from the manufacturing. So it could also eliminate the time of uh, having different communication channels and also to be more efficient in getting the instant and update information for the services as well. Thank you. And to add on a little bit, so looking at our implementation timeline, actually for the first quarter of the second year, there will be uh, the staff training process for both um, the dealer side as well as the manufacturer side. So the reason why we are having this is we want to make sure everything flows well and both uh, the dealer side and manufacturer side knows how to use this, um, like the interface inside of app or how to boost your communication into a more smooth and efficient way. Uh, thanks for that. My final question, and then I'll hand it back to Alpa, is um, the way you guys thought about it, you know, from a customer experience perspective makes a lot of sense to me, right? But I guess at the end of the day, what we're trying to do, the basic end goal here is to improve the customer experience for improving profitability, right, for a particular product, right? So when I think about that, the first thing that comes to my mind is sort of a carrot and a stick, right? So if the, de if the problem, if the identified problem lies with the dealer, right, what incentive do they have to be able to do all this? And what's the penalty? How do you guys think about that? <clears throat> Uh, maybe I could check up these questions. As we have mentioned before in our implementation timeline, we do have a training, regular training for our dealers. And our current practice of Porsche is that the dealer will also receive um, uh, commission once they have finished the deal. Therefore, our great incentive will be the commission that they are going to receive. As we have, uh, um, we have analyzed that uh, Porsche as a luxury brand that is greatly affected, the sales revenue is greatly affected by the world of mouth and also the buying willingness of the customer 
as really uh, focus on their satisfaction or from hearing their peers or friends for the um, comments. Therefore, uh, we would like to try to increase the enhancement of the customer services by offering um, more comprehensive and transparent services for the dealers and the, um, the buyers to get a better um, process of making the deal. And for the dealers, the great incentive will be the uh, more convenient services that we are offering in the app, such as the uh, portal or the reminder chat list to remind them what they actually need to do and what they are going to do for this client or for the other clients with the separate portal. Then it could also increase their efficiency and also to have a more effective communication between the customer, which could facilitate the completion of the deals and to increase their customer satisfaction. So when coming to, so after coming, after finishing the deal, then the customer can still get a lot of chances to uh, spread the satisfaction results to their friends and peers, um, which will contribute to the brand's word of mouth and to increase the dealer's uh, successful rate of having another uh, referral by the past customer as well. Yeah, in addition to what Vicky has mentioned, so we are trying to reduce the risk of uh, delivering the failure or misplaced orders, right? So if it is successful orders, it will reduce also the compensation that could be expanded or spent by the dealers. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Um, those are the questions I had back to you, Alpa, if you had anything more. Yeah, no, I don't have any further questions. And I see that we're running out of time as well. Yeah. Okay, thank you all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. So the judges will now stay in the room to deliberate. Their team will place you in the waiting room and bring you back in for the feedback session in a few minutes. Everyone else, please kindly leave the room and we will see you later for the results announcement. Thank you.